Well, Don Spaulding, an advisor to Learson, had decided what the company needed was a single product plan across both divisions instead of two product plans. So a task force was formed and we spent several weeks in a motel in Connecticut coming up with what is known as the spread report, which essentially was the 360 project. And as project manager, I, I was then given corporate responsibilities for all the computers. Bob asked us at one point in the spread meeting, can you make them binary compatible so the same software will run on all the models? And Gene, who was also on, Gene Amdahl, who was also on the task force, and I said, that's hard. It's easy to make them upward compatible. Making them downward compatible, putting floating point on your littlest machine, putting character arithmetic on your supercomputer, all right, I mean, those are not easy. Uh, but we'll try. And so we went off and studied it, came back and said, yeah, we'll do that. So they were made upward and downward binary compatible, which meant we could have one software plan. I called a design competition and said everybody in the 20-person architecture group in pairs or groups could turn in proposals and the decision of the judge would be final. And they had three weeks to put together sketches and so, meanwhile, a group including John Cock and Elaine Bohm had come over from research and Gene had come over from research and were part of the architecture group. And turns out when the three weeks were up and I looked at the plan, meanwhile I had done a little sketch and stuck it in a desk drawer just to see. And Gene's plan, Gene's little group's plan, and Jerry's little group's plan were, were clearly the strong ones compared to all the others. And they differed in only one important respect. Gene's was based on six bit bytes, and Jerry's was based on eight bit bytes. And so now the question became which way do we go? There are strong technical arguments each way, and it turns out when you think about it, I think the the six bit byte formats, I mean, it affects your instruction length, your number of index registers, your input output system, everything hinges on that decision. And the six bit bytes are really, the formats and all are really better for scientific computing. And the eight bit byte ones are really better for commercial computing, and each one can be made to work for the other. So it came down to an executive decision, and I decided for the 8-bit byte, Jerry's proposal. And so Werner Buchholz had seen to it that Stretch had, Stretch had variable byte length from one to eight. <laughs> and that, that was an extravagance that nobody wanted to repeat. But it was, it, it was imposed on us uh, essentially f because of the NSA machine. Okay. And so Gene appealed this to Bob and Bob upheld me. And so then we went back to work doing 8-bit bytes. So my most important technical decision in my IBM career was to go with the 8-bit byte for the 360. Mm -hmm. And on the basis of, I, I believe there was character processing was going to become important as opposed to decimal digits. In late 62, the software had been split off from the rest of the project and put in the, that division software house. And, in, and somehow they were preoccupied with building the software for the warm-over machines, which had early deliveries. So they hadn't put the strongest team on it. And they hadn't gotten the point of that we were going to a lot of trouble to build up down binary compatibility. And so they came in with four different software plans that were not mutually compatible, but were fit for different memory sizes. And this came in in December of 63 before announcement in 64. 
and we said that won't do at all we've got to kill that so it was clear that something had to be done so it was it was politically impossible to put the software back in the project. So I went to Bob and I said, I'm here till September and the machines are released to the factory. I'm not needed anymore on the hardware side. Let me go over and see if I can bail out the software side in the nine months remaining.